So what if I told you tomorrow morning you're going to wake up and the stock market is going to be down 50% from where you bought in? Let's say tomorrow you wake up and your account, your portfolio is down 50, 60% and you start to see all of this red, your stocks are down, you start to panic. What are you going to do in that particular time period? All of your hard-earned money, the money that you've been busting your butt at, at your job for, saving up, at your business, through side projects, through side hustles, you know, all of that money that you invested in the stock market is down 50, 60 percent. What are you going to do? You guys saw in the title of today's video, I am ready to lose 50 percent on my principal, on my account value in the stock market. And this is actually the unfortunate reality for many people that were investing in the stock markets in the early 2000s and and towards the, uh, you know, 2007, 2008 period, which is also known as the Great Recession. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about my mindset heading into the next recession. Like you guys saw, I'm ready to lose 50% of my money. We're also going to be breaking down some individual stocks performance throughout the last recession. We're also going to be looking at some indexes, the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ, taking a look at how they did performance-wise, percentage-wise in terms of the last recession and how much they rebounded from the bottom that they saw the indexes um, you know, throughout the recession from 07 to 09, also known again as the Great Recession. So if you guys enjoy this video, go down below, hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general and consider subscribing to the channel if you do enjoy the content here and also hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. So it's no news here. It's not a surprise that we are heading towards the end of an economic cycle right now, guys. The bull market has been running now for about 10, 11 years and we have a recession on average you know, every 5 to 10 years. So we're getting towards the end of this cycle. Not, I'm not calling the recession this month, next year, in six months. I'm not going to be that guy, but I will be that guy that's preparing as the recession starts to creep up because we all know that it's going to happen, but no one knows when it is going to happen. And it's always a good idea to be prepared by having cash set on the side, knowing what you're going to do and having that plan in place. So let's take a look here at the S&P 500. We'll see how much it rebounded, how much it fell in the year of 2007 through 2008. And you guys can see the previous recession in 2000, how it did as well. So the market here dropped to a low of 666, all the way down to about 666.79 from a peak of about $1,550. And you guys can see that is over a 50 50% drop. So the people that were buying, you know, at the peak of the markets here, they were down 50 to 60% on their money if they were investing in the index. And let's say in some individual stocks cases, you know, they were down you know, maybe 70, 80% and some of these stocks that got hit the hardest. And you guys can see back in the uh, 2000 recession, you know, we were at the same price roughly at about $1,550 and we sold off all the way down to $800. So the unfortunate reality here, guys, is if you were to invest in the S&P 500 at the peak in 2000 at about $1,500, you know, you would not have made a single dime in profit in until 10 years down the line as this second recession recovered and the bull market started to hit because think about it you know you invested here we sold off we rebounded but we didn't even get past the previous spot on the S&P 500 that we were at seven eight years prior um, in terms of this peak here then we dumped we lost about half of our value and this is the kicker here guys if you were to panic out of the S&P 500 if you were to panic sell let's say at like seven, eight hundred dollars you know, you were in the index, you would have missed out on 4Xing your money because you guys can see the S&P went all the way up to $3,000 nearly 
which, you know, from six, $700, you know, do the math, do 600 times four. What is that, guys? That's about $2,400. So you would have 4X plus your money if you were to buy at the bottom and hold all the way till now, which kind of solidifies my long-term philosophy in the stock market, guys, and me viewing all of these recession dips as buying points for the long term. Just think about it. You know, if you had a long-term vision here, you know, Although we were in a time period where the markets haven't been growing much, um, you know, over the past 10 years, this would still be a juicy opportunity to hop into some long term plays, some businesses that have a good economic moat that are going to be here for years to come. And, you know, history proved itself after that, as a lot of stocks did so well from this period, guys. A lot of stocks did so, so well. So you guys see 50% drop followed by a 4 X on the S&P 500. Going over here to the NASDAQ, guys, NASDAQ went from 2256 all the way down to about uh, $1,100 $1, roughly, which is another 50% drop, 50% drop in the NQ. And from there, guys, it went literally from $1,000 all the way up to $8 thousand dollars nearly eight thousand dollars for the nasdaq and i don't know about you guys but my math is telling me that that is nearly a seven to eight percent not eight percent seven to eight x return on the nasdaq so you know, initially, yeah, you're down 50%. You're down 50%. You may be panicking a bit, but if you have that long-term perspective, if you're like, okay, we're seeing this dip right now, you know, stocks are on sale, the amount of cash, the amount of value this business holds is way higher than what the stock price is, hence why the stock is undervalued. Okay, maybe this is an opportunity to hop in for the long-term, and if you were that, you know, using that mindset back in this time period, you would have done a ridiculously good job, um, you know, on your returns. And obviously, the NASDAQ is a tech heavy index. Tech stocks, you know, from this crash have rebounded ridiculously. Just think of Apple, Amazon, Google, Facebook. These stocks have done so well. Uh, you know, Facebook actually wasn't around, but, um, you know, the Googles, the uh, the Amazons, the Facebooks, uh, or rather the Apples, they have done so ridiculously well, you know, after the recession, it's not even cool, guys. So how I'm viewing this, guys, is short term, yeah, a recession, it's going to tank the stock market. Stocks could be down 30, 40, 50 percent. But long term, that is the beautiful buying opportunities that open up so many doors for building wealth long term. And that's kind of how I'm viewing Doing things, guys. You know, short term, yeah, there's going to be a lot of pain. Markets are going to be down. But if you have that long term vision, a lot of these value companies, they're going to be at such discounts. It's not even, it's going to be ridiculous, right? They're going to be at discounts where if you buy in at these dips, the wealth you're going to build through compounding, especially in some of these dividend stocks where the starting yield is going to be a lot higher when the stock is going down. Down and compounding that yield over time, you know, continuously buying more shares, reinvesting, the wealth you're going to build long term is going to be unbelievable, right? Which is why I love when the markets drop. I love it. I absolutely love getting in at cheaper valuations, at cheaper prices to build wealth for the long term. So taking a look at the Dow Jones performance here, you guys can see it went from 13,000, 14,000, all the way down to about 65 to about $7,000. So that was another 50% drop. And from there, we rebounded from $6,500 all the way up to about $27,000, which is roughly a 3 to 4x in the Dow Jones as well. So that's another prime example. Markets drop 50%. You know, are you willing to to withstand a 50% drop to get a 400% return over the next 10 years? Me personally, I am willing to do that. So you guys can see, you know, the major markets, they got hit pretty hard, but they rebounded very nicely, building a ton of wealth for people in America and across the world. And this is kind of how I'm viewing the next recession, guys. You know, if we drop, let's say, from 26,000 on the Dow, maybe down to about, you know, 
15,000, 16,000, again, maybe 18,000, you know, if we drop from the NASDAQ, you know, upwards of $7,800 here, if we drop down to, let's say, you know, $4,000, $4,500, if the S&P goes from twenty nine fifty, if it gets back to like, you know, $2,000 flat or like $1,800 or whatever it may be, I'm viewing these as very, very good dip buys to buy individual stocks and ETFs for the long term, guys. There's a bunch of different things that are going through my head. You know, that would be going through my head when the market crashes, right? I'll be looking at some small cap, you know, value stocks an ETF small cap growth because for those of you all that don't know during a recession during a crash typically the dividend aristocrats they don't get hit the hardest but what does get hit the hardest are the small cap stocks and what rebounds the hardest after the recession is these small cap stocks. So I will be, you know, investing in some small cap stock funds, small cap ETFs, because I am a younger guy. I'm willing to take on more risk and my horizon in the stock market is much longer than some of these other, you know, older people's horizons might be. So I'm willing to invest in some smaller cap ETFs for that growth potential after the rebound, you know, after the recession. So very quickly now, now that we saw the overall market, it's how much they dropped and how much they rebounded and kind of my thoughts and philosophies behind this viewing this as a buying opportunity you know let's take a look at some individual stocks we'll take a look at some value stocks and some growth stocks and see how they did after the recession so apple we love talking about apple on this channel let's take a look ape apl 2008 and went from $96 actually no that's not 2008 this is 2008 it went from $28 per share all the way down to about $11 per share guys that is more than a 50% drop that's like an 80 70 80% drop or like maybe like a 60 70% drop in the stock's price and you guys can tell the rest is history right from $12 all the way up to $233 I couldn't even tell you how many doubles that that is the stock has literally gone up like 20 times 20x from that period so if you were able to withstand the initial 60% drop well you would have made long term if you had the vision on apple you would have made 2000% right pretty pretty amazing right so amazon amzn this was literally a, a stock that 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 did amazing as well take a look at this from $92 in, in 07 it went all the way down to about $40 in 08 so from $40 guys all the way up to $2,000 what is the math on that? What is the math? $40 up to $2,000. Is that literally a 50x in Amazon stock? Yes, you heard me right. You would have been down 50-60% in 08. If you held, you would have made 5,000% if my math is right, which is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. You know, Facebook wasn't around then like we already mentioned. Google, we can see Google went from 350 all the way down to about 130. That's another 50% drop. And from 130 all the way up to 1300, which is roughly a 10x in Google stock over the span of 10 years. Think about that, guys. You're literally doubling, you know, every year per pretty much if we're going a thousand percent in 10 years that's about a hundred percent every single year so you guys can see how some of these tech stocks rallied if we're going into some I guess you can say more stable stocks maybe starting out with Disney you know, Disney went from 34 down to 16, and you guys can see how much it rebounded from there. If you want to see an even more stable, stable stock, you know, Coca-Cola, even Coca-Cola got hit in the recession, right? It went from 31 to about $20. You guys can see it wasn't roughly, uh, it wasn't really a 50% drop. It was more of like a 30% drop. And from there, from 20 bucks all the way to $52, you know, that was a nice little double and, and some since that point in time. You you know, PG is another one, Procter & Gamble, that's a pretty safe stock, from $72 down to about $46, you guys can see that is not a 50% drop, it was more of, um, you know, a 30-40% drop, and you guys can notice, you know, over some of these more safe value stocks, they don't drop as much during a recession as some of these gold st uh, uh, growth stocks, like we saw, you know, Apple, Amazon, Google, and, uh, you know, those type of stocks, right, and of course the small cap stocks get hit, 
very hard as well. You guys can see Procter & Gamble went from 45 to about $111. What are some other ones? You know, Pepsi's a safer stock, I guess you can say. You know, from 77 all the way down to about 47 then all the way up to 134 And you may be asking yourself, you know, are there stocks that didn't go down in their recession? Yes, there are a couple that come off the top of my head. McDonald's being one of them, guys. This is a very good play in the previous recession. And literally, if we zoom in on these years, you know, it went from like $47 and it actually appreciated in value um, in 2009. It was up to about $65 per share. Chipotle Mexican Grill is another one that went up during the recession and it went up a lot during the recession, guys. You guys can see, you know, it was at $73. It peaked at about $150 sold off to about 36 and then it started to ramp up all the way back to the hundreds you know after that dip to $36 which is really really awesome so those are just two stocks that I can personally think of that did quite well during the recession and guys I advise you to just take a look at a bunch of these stocks and see which stocks did well which stocks did poorly, which stocks did very, very well. You know, these are all great things to know when uh, uh, investing close to the next recession, right? So the gist of this video, the whole basis of this video is to not be scared about investing during the recession and to be prepared to lose 50% or more of your portfolio because that's what history is telling us has happened in the prior two recessions. So in my opinion, dipping in the markets, 50% 50% drops in the market, 50% dips. You know, these are buying opportunities for the long term because think about it, guys. The previous two times we've seen dips like this, it's made us generational wealth if you were to hold 10, 15 years, you know, after the dips, right? If you were to buy even after the 2000 uh, dip, after the 2008 dip, if you were to buy heavily and hold all the way up till now, just think about how much money you would have, right? And let's say we dip 50% now, by the year of 2030, in my opinion, in 10 years from now, the markets will be even higher and we will regret not buying if we were to see a recession this year and the markets were cut 30, 40, 50%. We would definitely regret, in my opinion, not loading up and holding for the long term. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it this far into the video, I'm currently in Mexico right now, which is why there is no market update video today, but expect a market update video for tomorrow on Wednesday. It should be coming out. And if you enjoyed this video, go down below, hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and you want to see further content from me, as well as drop a comment. Let me know down below in the comment section, what do you guys think about this video, this topic? Are you ready to lose 50% of your money? I would love to know. So I'll see you all in tomorrow's video. Expect a couple vlogs coming in Mexico, um, you know, how to trade while traveling, stuff like that, you know, showing you guys the resort, all that type of stuff. I'll see you all there. Have a great one. Peace out.